Next on Worcester News tonight, a man is suing the city and police officers, saying he was sent to prison for a crime he didn't commit. Plus, new technology at the Oxford Police Department. It will help officers expand their horizons. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Olivia Lemon. A Worcester man who spent 16 years in prison says he was wrongfully convicted. He filed a civil suit Thursday against the city and police officers. Nat Casenza and his lawyer say police pinned a crime on him and he lost years of his life with his family while enduring difficult conditions in prison. Our Brittany Schaefer joins us live now with more on tonight's top story. Brittany. Nat Casenza was convicted of assault and battery and armed burglary in 2002. He spent 16 years in prison for a crime he maintains he did not commit. He was freed in 2016 after court vacated his conviction and now he's suing the city and police officers. I want them to pay for what they for what they did to me. Nat Casenza spent 16 years in prison for a crime he says he didn't commit. The now 44 year old says the Worcester Police Department framed him. They lied. They, they got on the stand, perjured themselves. Um, they didn't care about what was going to happen to me or my family or what we were going through. They just cared about their numbers and getting the convictions. In 2000, Worcester police arrested Casenza after investigating an attack on a 37-year-old woman. Casenza's attorney, Chauncey Wood, says the victim's initial description of the suspect did not match Casenza, and Worcester police manufactured the identification procedure to lead to his arrest. The Supreme Judicial Court, several years later, recognized that the tactics used in this case were going to inevitably lead to wrongful convictions. Those procedures could not be used anymore. Wood says two Worcester detectives showed the victim nine faces and told her an arrest would likely not be able to happen if she didn't identify a suspect. The suit mentions an initial police report stating the victim didn't get a good look at her attacker and Casenza's lawyers say the identification process was the only piece of evidence used to convict him. The most common form and source of wrongful convictions are single witness identification cases. Nat's case is a classic wrongful conviction case. Nat's conviction wasn't an accident. It wasn't a mistake. The police lied and they cut corners to make sure that Nat was convicted. Wood says a pair of shorts left at the scene with the DNA not matching Casenza's was not used in his trial. Police intentionally hid the circumstances surrounding the discovery of those shorts so that they could protect their theory, their theory that Nat did this. Casenza says worse than the physical and mental abuse he experienced in prison was losing valuable time with his two daughters and father. When I did get exonerated, I was basically sentenced to another term where I had to watch my father die for two years. Um, it was the hardest thing I had to go through in my life. The only positive that I could see out of this is he got to see me be released. The city did release a statement saying we learned of these allegations only last Friday and we will vigorously defend the city and officers named in the complaint. Brittany Schaefer, Worcester News Tonight. A Holden man charged with killing his brother is sentenced to life in prison Thursday. According to the Worcester County District Attorney's Office, Michael Daujat was found guilty of second degree murder in April. According to prosecutors, Daujat made a conscious decision to kill his estranged brother, David Allen, in June 2014. They say the 68 year old inflicted more than 65 injuries to his younger brother, including knife wounds and blunt trauma. Daujat, Daujat has the possibility of parole after serving 15 years. A Southbridge apartment building is damaged by a three alarm fire Thursday. The police and fire department on scene this afternoon removing animals from the six unit building after residents were evacuated. The fire chief says about 24 people lived in the building and some were home at the time of the fire. A couple of residents were transported to the hospital for smoke inhalation and high levels of carbon monoxide as a precautionary measure. We had a heavy, very heavy smoke condition coming out of the front of the building. As soon as we got hose lines deployed, we had a major fireball come out of the left side of the building. Uh, crews entered on the left side of the building, knocked the fire down. We vented, extinguished the rest of the fire, and then looked for extension on the upper floors. 
The cause is under investigation. Chief DeFrozo says some people should be able to get back into the building later this evening. A new piece of technology at the Oxford Police Department will allow officers to get a bird's eye view. A drone provided by a local company will be a tool to keep the public safe. Our Roslyn Flaherty joins us live now with more. Roslyn. Olivia, the chief researched for years what drones are capable of, like finding missing children, and thought it would be a great addition to his department. Oxford Air One takes flight. The drone is the newest tool for the Oxford Police Department to help enhance public safety. Helping our officers in the street and helping our citizens. The drone can be launched from almost anywhere. It will help officers in situations like a SWAT team operation or locating a missing person. Say so we had a, uh, an injured individual over here at Hodges Village. Uh, we've got miles and miles of trails. Not everybody's familiar with all the trail systems. So they may call 911 and not know where they are we can actually put the drone up with the thermal camera and actually find them. Pilot and command officer Craig Gagner says the drone has three different cameras which he controls from the ground. He can see what's happening on a screen in front of him. In this video, people can be seen walking around in the middle of the night. We've got a, a fixed lens 4K camera, we've got a zoom lens 4K camera, and then we've got the thermal camera, which is uh, invaluable in, in my opinion. Uh, just at night, you can see everything. Officer Gagner says he used the drone Wednesday during a brush fire in town and it had great results. I was able to give the deputy chief some feedback as to the hot spots, if there were any additional spot fires in the area. The device was paid for by the Oxford based company IPG Photonics. Chief Anthony Sad says they'll only use the drone when they need its help and residents don't have to worry about it invading their privacy. It's going to be very specific. So obviously there are Fourth Amendment considerations, search and seizure considerations, and we put the drone up in those particular uh, circumstances, we'll, we may have to write a search warrant. Gagner is the only officer who is qualified to fly the drone. He says it can be nerve-wracking at times, but it's all about completing the mission. And Chief Sad hopes to get another officer qualified to fly the drone. He also says other departments can take advantage of it, like the DPW. Rosalind Flaherty, Worcester News Tonight. Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito and the Biomanufacturing Task Force recognized by the Worcester Business Development Corporation. The group was presented the 2018 Bowditch Economic Development Award at the 53rd Annual Business Meeting. Polito, the force, and other city leaders are redeveloping the former Worcester State Hospital into a new biomanufacturing park. The WBDC says this award is for the significant contributions they've made to the economic vitality of Worcester. By the biggest thing about this work is it, it really is about our partnerships, uh, state, local, federal government relationships and, and funding and support. Um, these are difficult projects to tackle. Awards were also presented to companies who have committed to investing in downtown Worcester at the Idea Lab and Accelerator Space. A local brewery making a name for itself on the national level. Worcester's own Wormtown Brewery took home a bronze medal in this year's World Beer Cup. They won in the Munich style Hellas beer category. Wormtown faced more than a hundred other beers. The competition took place in Nashville, Tennessee and only happens once every two years. The brewery won its first award at the event in 2012, taking home silver for their Pro-Am Porter. An annual bullying prevention conference in Worcester aims to educate teachers and students on how to make others feel included and safe. Today's keynote speaker says Worcester's work to prevent bullying goes above and beyond other districts. Our Chandler Walsh was at today's conference and joins us now with more. Chandler. Olivia, keynote speaker Samir Hinduja is internationally recognized for his work on cyberbullying. This is the sixth annual bullying prevention conference. It's sponsored by Worcester Public Schools, the District Attorney's Office, U Inc., and Worcester Juvenile Court. Bullying is something some students, unfortunately, know all too well. When I was in elementary school, I was always like bullied about my weight and my height. I was targeted a lot of times because of my sexual orientation. And schools want to help. More than 200 Central Mass educators attended a bullying prevention and education conference at North High School. The conference presented anti-bullying strategies and programs for school districts. 
This year's theme was inclusion. Inclusion means that we're all in this together, and we, whatever or whoever walks in our schools, that we have to make sure that we treat them equally. Keynote speaker Samir Hinduja gives anti-bullying speeches around the world. He says he's noticed Worcester schools' efforts with anti-bullying clubs, kindness movements, and supportive teachers. When I go to other places, that's not really the story. So I feel like schools in Worcester are actually being intentional about these issues, and we just want to keep up the momentum. Worcester's school safety director, Robert Pazella, says bullying prevention can also make schools safer. He says nationwide, there have been more than 200 school shootings since 1998, and some shooters were victims of bullying. If we see somebody that's a target of bullying, we have to help and support them because we don't want them down the road to feel that they need to get revenge for the way they were treated years earlier while they were attending school. The conference also discussed the need for resilience. It's how past bullying victims came out on top. Keep pushing through the hardships and it's always going to be worth it at the end of the day. Now I'm very confident in myself and I really don't care what people think. School Safety Director Pazella says a main goal of the conference is for attendees to take what they've learned and bring it back to their own districts.